In this video, we'll take a quick look at the ins and outs of removing the main fuse in order to carry out electrical work and what to do if you've identified problems at the intake position. This is a most frequent question in chat rooms and wherever electricians congregate. Can I pull the main fuse? I need to do a board change next week. Can I pull the main fuse out? If the customer has a smart meter, what are my options? And even worse, I need to do a board change. Can I do it live? And yes, that does happen. The answer for 99% of us is a big fat no. We don't own that part of the installation and we are not responsible for its maintenance or repair. The DNO or MO has a legal obligation to maintain their equipment in a safe and functional condition. That is one reason they put seals on equipment, to try and restrict unauthorised access. What do you do if you need to remove the main fuse in order to isolate the consumer unit for a board change, for instance? There are three possible routes available to you. Arrange for the electricity supplier to attend site and remove the main fuse for you and to then replace and reseal it when your work is finished. Ask the supplier to install an isolator switch as this will allow you to isolate the consumer unit at a time to suit you. Or be an authorised person. This will only happen if the electricity supplier has actually authorised you to remove their main fuse, to replace it and to reseal it. Large electrical contractors will have certain electricians that are authorised to remove fuses. They will be aware of the dangers of what they are doing and will have the necessary protective equipment to carry out the task. DNO is shorthand for Distribution Network Operator and MO is for Meter Operator. Metering equipment is owned by the Meter Operator. The DNO is responsible for the cables that lead to the property and for the cutout box and main fuse. Look at this photo of a service cupboard on an average domestic property. Everything in this service box is the responsibility of the DNO and MO. We can look and make observations, but we should not be making any repairs or maintenance in here. Shortly, we'll be looking at a thing called an MPAN number. This is not the same as the serial number that's on the meter. BS7671 informs us that we carry out a visual inspection of the intake and metering equipment. If we look at the condition report inspection schedule, it states quite clearly at 1.0 that for the intake equipment, we should carry out a visual inspection only. In other words, we can look, we can observe, we can use our sense of smell and we can listen. Perhaps even feel if parts are hot, but we must not tamper. Customer owned equipment begins with the meter tails that go from the supply meter to the customer's own consumer unit. Or, if an isolator switch is installed, from the meter tails that leave the isolator and go to the consumer unit. Although the customer may own the meter tails, they do not have the authority or permission to remove any seals or open equipment to remove them from the meter or isolator if one is fitted. So, who is responsible for what? This very simple drawing should help. The DNO is responsible for the supply cable that comes into the property. They are responsible for the service head or cutout box and for the main fuse. The meter operator has responsibility for the metering equipment and any timer clocks that are part of the installation. Now the tricky bit. The meter tails connect the meter to the consumer unit. The MO owns the meter, the customer owns the consumer unit and very possibly the meter tails as well. However, the customer cannot remove the meter tails from the meter as this is considered tampering and to do so would require us to remove the seals. Try to think of it this way. If you are removing DNO or MO seals, then you are going where you shouldn't go. An isolator switch doesn't change things too much. The responsibility of the MO simply moves to the customer side of the isolator switch. We cannot remove the seals on the isolator, but we can now turn the power off and isolate at will. Several years ago, we all knew of an electrician who knew the rules and took a chance on removing the fuse themselves in order to do a board change and got away with it. But nowadays, if a smart meter is installed, removing the main fuse would cause the event to be registered at the meter operator's offices. 
The meter operator will investigate. They've seen an increase in attempted thefts of electricity over recent years, and this will be their first thought. You are trying to steal our electricity. Typical response times experienced by electricians that have done this is about 90 minutes before you get a knock on the door. Now you have some explaining to do, and you have to pay for the meter to be resealed. As well as being suspected of stealing electricity, there are other problems that you may create for yourself. Some fuse carriers contain asbestos, with all the health and safety hazards and procedures that must be followed. If you remove the fuse, you will assume responsibility for any hazardous waste to clean up if the asbestos creates any dust. Now you must find the right face masks, coveralls, and pay for the disposal of the asbestos, however small, as hazardous waste. In some older properties, some fuse carriers are extremely difficult to remove, and the service head is not properly secured to the wall, often through the age of the installation and the fixings drying out. The result is that the cutout box comes away from the wall with the fuse still in place, especially if it's fixed with wooden plugs between the brickwork, or the Bakelite housing cracks. Now you need the DNO to come out and effect repairs. Far better to have paid for the DNO to remove the fuse or install an isolator switch. Any problems will be their problems, not yours. Let's say that we've looked at the incoming supply and we can see a problem with some part of it. What is the correct course of action? If a problem with DNO or MO equipment poses an immediate danger to life or has the potential to cause a fire, something that might be a C1 on an EICR, then the proper course of action is to contact the DNO or MO and report the problem. They will decide on the appropriate response depending on what they are told. It's the client's responsibility to report any issues to the DNO or MO, although an electrician can advise the client on the information they need to hand or even make the call for them. If you're reporting damage, danger or serious issues, the client will need to know their MPAN number and this can be found on the latest electricity bill or online using the information on the next slide. It's not the same as the meter serial number. A meter can be changed and have a new number, but an MPAN number is unique to a specific installation. For a domestic dwelling, it's a unique identifier for that property. MPAN is short for meter point administration number. To find the MPAN number on the bill, look for a box on the bill that looks very similar to the one shown here. This is the service number, beginning with an S, and contains a lot of useful information that the supplier can use. The whole thing will be 19, 20 or 21 digits long. The MPAN number you need is all the bottom row of the box, usually just 13 digits long. The first two digits are the distributor ID. The next eight digits are the unique identifier for that installation. And the last three are a check number that means something to the supplier. Or we can find the MPAN number online. Enter the address shown into a web browser and follow the prompts for postcode and address details as they come up. The information that we need will then be shown. I will also leave this web address in the introduction to this video. Looking online is quick and accurate because you are looking at the actual current data that is stored by the National Grid. The MPAN number is shown along with the supplier and their contact telephone number. Also shown is the address that they have on record. If it's wrong, they will need to know. You, or the customer, must have certain information to hand before you contact the supply company. These essentials are listed here. Pause the video and take a few moments to understand what is required. If you're reporting a problem, what are the different areas of the intake position? Again, the condition report inspection schedule on page 527 of the Brown Amendment to Wiring Regs book will help. It lists the different areas to look at and helps in describing any problems to the electricity supplier. Here are some examples of reporting descriptions that can be used. This is how we should describe any issues that might need to be reported about the service cable or the condition of the service head and cutout. And what about the earthing arrangements? Again, here are some things to look for. And once reported to the DNO, 
they will give you a unique reference number. Record this number carefully, ideally with the name of the DNO member that took your call and the date and time of the call. Write the information down and keep it safe. You may need it in the future. An option that many will take is to have an isolator switch installed. Installing an isolator switch is the most appropriate action to allow the electrician to isolate the supply completely at the meter tails. Once installed, the electrician can isolate the whole installation at will and as frequently as needed without further involving the electricity supplier. The phone number that you need will be found online on the same page that displays your MPAN number or you can use the general inquiries number for the national grid as shown here. There is usually a charge for this and often a delay of a few weeks to have it installed. The earlier that the customer arranges this, the sooner you will be able to complete your work. Alternatively, arrange for the DNO MO to remove and replace the main fuse. There will still be a delay and the electrician will need to be on site when this happens. So, at the end of all that, no, you cannot pull the main fuse yourself unless you are specifically authorised by the DNO or meter operator. The best option by far is to have an isolator switch installed. Alternatively, arrange for the fuse to be removed and replaced by the meter operator. There will be a charge for whichever option your client decides upon. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated, and we hope you found this video useful. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos, and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos, and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.